Alright, I pressed, uh, I pressed this seam flat. Now, shows here in the instructions, and this kind of threw me a little. Because, it's actually, you got to do it the other way. And this is what threw me the first time I did these because I couldn't, I'm not going to lie, I got a little bit of a learning disability. I'm a, I'm a little dyslexic, at least that's what they called it when I was a kid. Um, so when I look at things, sometimes my brain looks at them backwards. So this wants to be like this. This is the good side of the material, and this is the good side, or the, so it's good side to good side, and this is the top edge. Now because I made this so long, I'm going to have a problem when I go to finish it. Just so you're aware of that. If you're going to... Rule of thumb with any project is if you modify the directions, you are then responsible for whatever nonsense that happens after that. You can't modify somebody else's plans and not expect a fuck up. Uh, I used to call it the cascade effect. You change one thing, you've changed everything. In this particular instance, by changing the length of these, significantly I might add, I'm going to have to play, play some kind of games when it comes time to flip them over and finish it. And you'll see how that works in a minute. Once I'm done tacking this down. I'm actually probably gonna sew this with the sail right. Because it's getting a little, it's getting a little thick in some spots. Like this is pretty thick in here. <laughs> Another thing you wanna do at this point Undo the zipper. It says it right here. You see it right there? I know somebody that may have done this project once before and accidentally sewed the pants shut. I don't know how that could have possibly happened, but it did. This also will be in... begin the end of the zipper needing to be long. So I'm actually going to trim this zipper to the top of the pants here. Yeah, you're committed now, feathers. Alright, so... Alright, we're committed. Not that we weren't before, but I like to say it. I like to remind myself that I'm I'm all I'm all in at this point. And like I said, because I've altered the design, I now own this section of extra. means when I go to sew the Velcro in, I'm going to have to get a little creative. Because 
I mentioned it before, and I, I think it bears reiteration. I'm not going to put a button in this. I'm just going to have a big ass strip of Velcro across the front. Like I said, if Velcro, if Velcro held the space stuff on the space shuttle. I think it. Well, I guess the space shuttle is a bad example. Um, um, yeah, only a few nerds will get that. Um, Velcro hold. We'll hold it together, no problem. Like I said, I'm, the pants I'm wearing right now, I haven't buttoned in like three days. And it's not because I'm fat, because I am, but, but it's because the Velcro works. No reason to not do the Velcro and just skip the button. This, uh, the finish, the notion for this, the notions list for this, is that you're supposed to use a metal clip. Um, I didn't read that when I bought them. I probably wouldn't have bought the metal clip anyway. I would have just went with the button. I never, I was never a big fan of that, um, of that anyway. So, there for the grace of God go I. We have now effectively put the whole waistband in. Now the waistband, this is the outside this is the good side, this is the good side, this is the bad side. Now I'm going to take this over to the sail right and I'm going to run my half inch. Um, actually, it worked out pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty close here with the uh, with the notch. The notch is supposed to line up with the something, I forget what. The front. The notch is supposed to line up with the, there it is, with the front of the zipper. And it lines up pretty good. You know, for me, that's not bad. Before you sew it in, make sure you don't have any big puckers or assholes in it. Um, because that'll cause you a problem down the road. But what I'm going to do, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, a lot of my friends love to be around when I make a mistake. Um, it's kind of like the brunt of, I'm the brunt of many a joke when it comes to that. And you're all about ready to watch me make a mistake. I didn't check my bobbin before I started this and I can almost guarantee I can almost guarantee I'm gonna run out of bobbin thread at some point which means I'm gonna to have to break this whole setup down and um, address that no forward and backward I'm trying to maintain a half inch seam allowance. Um, I'm really glad I'm using the sail right because it already gacked a little bit over the over the um, zipper. Now we're into the now I'm into the pocket area. <laughs> Oops, almost ate it. Nah, I did eat it. Damn it. Ah, you rat fuck. Yeah, the only thing, only upside is you'll never see this. This seam is invisible except from the inside. I'm gonna run back over that, and create a nice little rat's nest. Um, I mentioned before, but I think it's another one of those bears reiteration. Um, with this heavy flywheel, I have to be mindful of where I stop because I'm going to let off. Oop, and there we go. I just hit the pin. You saw how far it went after. Oh, I think I broke the needle. Yep. Shit. Oh, well, you wanted to see how to change the needle on a cell, right? Well, here's your opportunity. At least it broke it here. Um, that's a hell of a needle to snap, too. But, you know, you ram it. You ram the... Um, you ram a piece of steel into a piece of steel, they'll break. 
Uh, let's see if I can get around this. I knew something was going to go south. So you undo that screw. This is the screwdriver that came with my Bernina, and I really like it. It's a nice, nice little screwdriver. So take that screw out. Um, I'm going to cut this thread because I have to re-thread it anyway. I'm a jackass. There we go. There's a big assembly behind here that you can't reach, so you gotta look at my finger here. Uh, do yourself a favor and don't drop the needle down into the machine, which I've done also already. So yeah, snap that fucker right off. I, I knew it as soon as I did it. A needle makes a very distinctive noise when it breaks. That was the noise. Uh, let's see here. I just threw that away and I don't remember what size it was. That was one in a million shot. I picked it up off the floor. Oh, that's not the same one. Eh, it's a different broken one. So, oh well. All right, we're gonna arbitrarily pick one. I'm fairly sure that was a 16 that I took out of there. And since my little needle holders are missing the vast majority of 16s, I'm gonna assume that was a 16. All right, now when you're replacing the needle on the sail right, um, you wanna make sure that the cut, the cut in the needle there goes to the right. Sorry about the fingers there in the way. So the, the cut's going to the right. to get that started. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Give that a little bit more. Doesn't need a lot but you definitely want to make sure that the needle is all the way up against the stop and the screw is relatively tight. Um, the the uh, sail right threads from the left to the right which I thought was really weird but it's industrial machine so or it's based on an industrial machine. It's not it's based on an industrial machine. The industrial machine start that way. I just wish there was like a little bit better way of, um, uh, oh, I, oh, there it is. There's the broken needle right there. And I think I may have just pulled the last of my bobbin thread out. Either that or I cut the bobbin thread with the needle. We're gonna, we're gonna find out real quick if I can pick the bobbin thread up. Most usually when that happens, I can't pick the bobbin thread up. Yeah. All right. Ah, gar, gar. Mm, you don't need to see me picking my nose. Ah. So. I was right anyway. There, there was a double whammy of screw ups here. So this is actually how the machine opens. Um, that's where the bobbin carrier is, right there. And there's the bobbin, or that's the bobbin, the shuttle, I think they call that. Um, the bo and this is the bobbin case. And look at that, bobbin's out of thread. So you get to see me thread a bobbin too. So. So this is what that kickstand's for. If you watched my unboxing video on this um, machine, you'll know that that's the kickstand that doesn't come with it. You have to buy that extra. Um, which I think is kind of shitty, but this machine is not designed to be, this machine has a different base that comes with it when you buy it as a Magnum machine. I bought the super premium package, um, which com can comes with this case. Um, so to thread the bobbin, to thread, to string a bobbin on this machine, it's relatively simple. 
Um, you have run the thread through here, run it through here, just like every other sewing machine. Yeah, good enough. Um, around the tension disc. I think I make this, I think I make this a little bit more difficult than it needs to be, but I always run it that way. I actually have a bobbin here that probably has enough thread on it to finish, but I, I have a whole lot more sewing to do on this. So on the top of the machine here is the bobbin spooler. That's up there. And just like every other machine, you just click that over to the right. Uh, you pull this pin out and it comes with a nice little hole that you can stick it in. Oh, I can't see it. So that's the way it threads. That's my spool, that's that, that's that. And then I'm gonna get it started. And I wanna cut my thread. Thusly. Now what I like to do, which is probably not a good practice, but I do it anyway. Because I'm kind of lazy, we've discussed my laziness. I I hold this thread and I over tension the bobbin. So I got a pretty good bit of tension on this thread here to get the bobbin to wind a lot tighter than it's supposed to be. Another thing that I found very interesting about this machine. Um, is this extra, um, this flywheel, oops, um, eh. well, me being me and not even well enough alone, I adjusted the, that's tricky to get off, it's got a heck of a spring on it, I adjusted the um, bobbin shut off so that it'll put more thread on the bobbin so I actually have to pay kind of half-ass attention to um, I gotta pay half-ass attention when I'm winding the bobbins or else it'll do exactly what it just did which is overwind the bobbin uh, bobbin goes in like that, just like every other old-timey sewing machine. That clicks around, that goes there. You hold that open. Pop the bobbin into the carrier. Gently lower the lid to thread the machine. Undo it from there. I can do this one-handed so that goes there this always kind of gets me a little because that how's that going? It goes that's like a little curly cue in there um, then you run it through sorry for the shaky camera there we go run it through there Doing this with one hand is a little tricky. And then back through again through the top. This is the only thing that's a little bit different than any other machine I've used, but I'm fairly sure that's a this is a common threading practice. Down through there, up behind the spring, just just like just like the singer that you used in in um, in home ec class. Make sure it goes around the spring. Click it up. Through the, through this thing here. That I can't do with one hand. I'm actually considering taking this guard off. I'm sure it's there for a reason. Uh, that 
goes there. It then, oh, then it goes behind the case here through that little hole. And then you thread the needle itself. just like sewing class. Oh, you have to put the pin back in or else it won't move. Um, this, they call that the posi clutch and basically what it is is it just, there's no clutch. This is hard to do with one hand. I didn't have the um, the bobbin case all the way into the. I didn't have the bobbin case all the way into the shuttle or the case holder. That's why it wasn't picking the thread up. Because that it was all just a little bit sketchy, and I don't know why, I'm gonna run a test before I before I sew shit. I'm gonna run a test. That looks fairly good. And back to where we were. I had a sinking feeling that, <clears throat> that I was going to have a problem. And everything else was going too smoothly. Alright, so back to where we were here. a little quicker on my removal uh, so when I broke the needle what I wanted this what I was in the middle of saying is so I'm pushing the pedal now I'm gonna let off right now and you saw it went like for five more stitches so that's just inertia that's uh, it's just inertia that's pulling the machine along with that big ass flywheel on there So that we're down to one level or one thickness right there. I'm gonna pull that out. Um, this machine, you gotta make sure you're at the end of the stitch before it'll release. Um, let's go back over to the table and see what, what else we got cooking. Then I picked up a hitchhiker. Um, this was my test piece uh, after I changed the needle out. I just wanted to make sure that it was sewing nice. And um, it, it sews, it's sewing perfect. You know, it's, every once in a while when you change a needle, when you re-thread a machine, um, things will go a little sideways. It happens. Um, usually happens to me right as everything starts to be sewing perfectly. Some kind of goofy, some goofiness will happen. Now, I want to point this out because I think it's pretty poignant. You can see all this fraying and stuff. This is all because I didn't surge 
Um, I didn't surge this. Um, I, I don't need to surge it. I'm gonna fold it back over. It'll all be hidden. But I do kind of wish, when I do the next pair of these, I'm gonna cut these at like four inches wide, not three inches wide, or three and a half inches wide, and surge all my edges. Because this fraying drives me nuts. And it would do it no matter what direction I was sewing. Okay, now that is my edge. That's my that's the top. That's it right there. Now I'm gonna take it over to the my pressing table or to my ironing board, and I'm gonna iron this seam flat. Damn it! I did it again. Ugh. This. This seam is not lined up. But it, I lined it up, I thought I lined it up perfectly here. And apparently when I went to sew it, I knocked it off by about a quarter of an inch. The, the pair that I'm wearing is worse. But boy, if that's not enough to piss off the Pope. Yeah, right there. Um, all right, I'm gonna press this, and then I'm actually gonna do a double double whammy of a press here. I'm gonna press this in, all right, so I have to press this down and create a hem here. I have to create, actually what I might do is, I'm gonna surge this. This is irritating the living hell out of me. So I'm actually, first thing I'm gonna do is take this over to the serger and surge this whole, this whole thing here. You don't need to see that. It's gonna be Alrighty. I um, went over to my ironing board and I pressed the... Um, whoops. Whoops. Um, I pressed the this over. I screwed that up. I'm going to fix that. I don't need to fix it right this second. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overstitch this whole seam here to hold it in place. Now, I'm not sure whether or not it actually tells you to do that in the, the instructions. Yeah, actually what it does is it tells you to pin it and then um, uh, hem this edge. I'm not gonna hem this edge just yet, I don't think. I mean, I could like that. I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna sew this this top seam first to get it to make sure that it's gonna lay flat. And I'm just gonna do that on the Bernina and just run it right through the Bernina. I don't, I could do it on the sail right. It's not thick enough to do on the sail right just yet. There's not a whole lot of thick, thick spots. When I go back, now I'm gonna go back again and I'm gonna sew along here, then I'm gonna use the sail right. Actually, you know what, I'll use the sail right. I, yeah, I'll just use the cell right to do the top edge. And we're going to try a different angle here. See how this works out. Um, it would work a lot better if I actually had the material. <laughs> because I can, um, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch along the top here. Um, I'm doing that for a couple reasons. Uh, the main reason I'm doing it is style. Um, that, that's the, the, really, that's the only reason I'm doing it is for style points. Um, like I said, we're trying to look burly here. And I have a zigzag stitch across the front of the pocket, so why not do it along the top edge? Yeah, it looks pretty good. This is set at the widest zigzag that this machine will do. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. It's nice and consistent. Make sure I don't sew myself together here.
Yeah, I think the zigzag, I think the, uh, the sail right was the way to go with this, um, with this particular seam here. Now I'm not gonna bother backstitching, well I will, um, backstitching it. I wasn't gonna backstitch it, but I decided to backstitch it. All right, now pull that out of there. And let's go take another look at what we're gonna do here. Now I've made a, a full-blown executive decision here and I am just going to I am just going to zigzag the bottom too. It, it's supposed to have, this, because I surged this edge here, um, I'm not overly concerned about hemming this back, okay? Um, I could do that. Just a little. Uh, you know what, give me a minute here. I gotta think. All right, um, I've made an executive decision and I am going to baste the edge. Well, I'll, you'll see what I'm gonna do in a second. Um, yeah. Uh, what I'm gonna do it with is this Sailrite um, seam stick quarter inch basting tape for canvas and upholstery, 50 yards. Um, and the part number is, uh, yeah, you can see the part number is uh, 104167.1 or asterisk one. Um, I used up the last of it, so I figured I'd show the bag. <clears throat> what I've done here is I folded, so I sewed, that's the zigzag you just saw me do. Um, and then I sat there for a minute trying to figure out how am I going to, how am I going to finish this inside edge? Now, honestly, a commercial, if you were to buy these pants commercially, most likely they would just leave this edge here done that would be that you would have the surged edge I want my custom pants to be a little bit cleaner and neater on the inside and then that that's what's gonna happen so I know you're not supposed to use this stuff for, for clothes um, but guess what I think uh, I think and my industrial clothing, I can use industrial techniques to make it. We're getting close. Um, so I have to remember which side to put it on. You know, I'm going to put it on that side. And you'll see why in a second. I should keep this stuff in the bag, but I go through it so fast that it doesn't generally get too shitted up. Uh, ah. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna fight with me. This is actually why I'm using the basting tape. Because when I try to fold it around on itself to get it to hem nice, I was having a hell of a I was having a hell of a time getting it to do that. So I, I did a little tiny bit of work off camera. Um, trying to come up with the best method to do this. Now, I could have done this with pins. Um, I absolutely could have done this with pins. But, um, two things. One is jamming pins through eight layers or six layers of um, canvas is not a pleasant thing to do. Uh, the clips will not work at least I couldn't I didn't spend let me rephrase I didn't spend any time trying to figure out how to do it with the clips I immediately went to basting tape it's my go-to um, obviously this is something that your average seamstress isn't going to have on hand um, this isn't something that you can you can buy something like this at um, like Joanne but it's not it's not nearly as good as this stuff this is this is industrial um, this is an industrial material I 
I am a fan of using industrial materials. If I have the opportunity to use something that's used by professionals as opposed to something that's used for consumers, I will generally use materials and tools that are available to industry if there's if it's reasonable. Um, and I like to go shopping at um, I like to go shopping at the restaurant supply house. Um, I buy as many prosumer tools as I can. Um, that that includes my my pretty much all of my equipment isn't pro grade, but. Well, actually, all my body shop stuff is because that's what I did for a living. So, this this is what got me to thinking about how to fix this problem. Is this gnarly edge in here? So, I'm gonna peel this back, and I need to sew this from the other side uh, because I need to keep it in a certain spot when I sew it, and you'll see that when I take it back over to the sewing machine. Ah, I want only a quarter of an inch, give or take a little bit, as close to a quarter of an inch as I can. So my basting tape is quarter of an inch or eight millimeters. Now, went through that five millimeters. Goddamn metric system. My card get my card gets four rods and the hogs hit and that's the way I like it. I think it's five point something or other millimeters. Um but this tape is quarter of an inch give or take a little bit. So that will see that makes that edge look so much nicer, um, and it's not really not that much work. Now, hey, if you buy cheap clothes, all they'll do is baste it. They won't even sew it. Um, if you buy really cheap stuff, like uh, you know at, at Walmart or what have you, if you buy dress clothes at Walmart. You see it a lot on dress clothes, or they literally will just, they'll just tape this stuff together, they'll slam a dry clean only sticker on it, and then um, that's it. Because the you know cheap, cheap, cheap dress clothes are only designed to last for a couple, you know, year or two until they go out of style. If you ever bought a cheap suit at Boscov's on your way to a wedding, which I may have done, you'll know that it's only good for a couple weddings and then that's the end of it. Now, if you spend $4,000 on a tailor-made suit from Tank or Emeril Azaldi Gigliago or whatever the hell the name of that place is that sells $4,000 suits, um, You'll, you'll notice a significant difference in the, the construction quality of the, of the clothes. And that the difference is this stuff. That's actually kind of what got me started with this. Um, or one of, the, one of the things that I, one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this stuff is I really, really, really like tailor-made clothing. Um, the problem with tailor-made clothing is it's ludicrously expensive. Um, and it, it's ludicrously expensive for multiple reasons. One is the materials that are used are always of a much finer quality than you're gonna get from um, even even like Hugo Boss or, um, uh, and I got a beef with Hugo Boss too. I mean, it's not because not because of his snappy dressers, but because of, uh, they don't make clothes for fat guys. Um, if you're over a 38, don't bother going to Hugo Boss for clothing because they don't sell it. Which is really funny because Herman Goering is huge. Um, 
so you know the upside is this particular section is going to be covered um, that didn't actually work out all that great and this is the extension that I added so I'm going to have to figure that out So I like tailor-made clothes. I like nice things. I like expensive watches. I obviously like expensive sewing machines. And these machines aren't even that expensive. The sale right's a little, little pricey, but the Bernina is literally right on line for what a machine of that caliber should cost. Um, they, they get a lot, uh, they get way more expensive. Uh, the Bernina is actually I hate to say it's a cheap machine, but it's it's not a very expensive machine in the world of expensive sewing machines. It's not an expensive sewing machine. So I got to figure out how far to fold this in and still get. pretty decent. Now I'm going to go back along here and check to make sure two things. One is that it's stuck down good. Two is to make sure that it's stuck down straight because I'm going to be sewing this side blind. So I'm sewing this side blind, so when I feed it into the machine, I'm never going to see what the back side looks like until I'm done. And like I said, this end here is going to be, these ends are what's going to close, close them. So this is going to overlap, maybe not quite that much, but it's going to be an overlap across the front that's going to have Velcro on it. And we'll sew the Velcro in in a minute because I have to get my width correct. I'm going to try these on in a minute. You get to see me in my underwear. All right. Uh, I'm not going to bother moving the camera. You've already watched me break a needle. So when I come back, you'll see where this is sewed. This will be sewed.